Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. This is me, Daniel Rosal, as usual. Today I set up a, another science experiment uh, intended to answer a, a, well, offer one data point from my own uh, my own observations about whether the M-Disc or the verbatim uh, inorganic HTL Blu-ray is a better media for archival or just to try put them head to head. Now, again, I'm not saying this is the perfect experiment designed by a long shot, but uh, I thought it would be a fun little way to attempt to just try get some data. So uh, what I want to do in today's video, I'm just going to show you guys quickly how I set this up, what my methodology was. And I'm going to check in two weeks to see how the discs are doing. And then maybe I'll keep it running for the long term, depending on how annoyed my wife gets with the weird uh, disc monuments in our garden. So uh, this is uh, what I did basically was uh, turn to my uh, my old trusty uh, disc testing uh, file, which is Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor. It's uh, it's public domain in the Library of Congress, so I can show it without uh, getting copyright strikes here on YouTube. And uh, the reason I chose this uh, was because actually, let's just go over to my methodology. Uh, it is um, it fits on anything. It's uh, 583 megabytes. So I downloaded that. Um, then I took some checksums, uh, which uh, might be helpful in uh, determining whether the files are good or not. Um, I recorded the checksums just in this Google sheet that I'm showing you. Um, I'm very far from a checksum expert. Uh, so I figured I'd kind of play it safe by calculating all the checksums. Uh, I think SHA-1 is kind of the one I'll be looking at, uh, but if you if you have any suggestions, please uh, please let me know. Um, the thing I did differently this time is in my first little experiment, which is ongoing, I uh, played around with the ECC uh, that is generated with DV Disaster. So I was like putting some on the disc and taking some off. And uh, those discs have been outside now for a few weeks. Um, but in this one, I didn't. So I just kind of said I wanted to keep it simple and put one file on each disc and see just how that file holds up essentially. So obviously for the Blu-ray media, it was it was less than uh, one over 25 in mathematics, like 2% or like very, very not full. Um, so then I just recorded uh, using QPX tool, the media information, like the manufacturer ID. Uh, then I put them, I burned them on the disc and I made sure for the M-Disc and the Blu-ray, uh, the regular Blu-ray, to use the same burning speed, so it's kind of a fair comparison. I used 4X on both of those media. Uh, I went out to a craft supply store today for the first time in my life, uh, and I, I just bought everything I thought might be useful for this. So I picked up some knitting needles and some little metal clamps and uh, all sorts of gizmos, and uh, that's what I actually used for... I'll, I'll show you guys some photos. So then I'm, these guys are going to be outside for two weeks. I might move them around a little bit just to, you know, uh, change the order of the discs, try and make sure they're all getting some of all the things we're trying not to get on our CDs in the usual uh, usual course of things, stuff like direct sun exposure, which is UV, water, freezing, everything. Um, and I'm doing this deliberately in the winter for that reason. So then I've set myself a calendar reminder on the 21st of, uh, that should be the 2nd. Let me just change this now. On the, 20, on the 21st of this month, February, uh, I'm going to call this N.1. It's just a quick two-week initial aging. And uh, as I said, if I can find space, I might keep this experiment going for three months or even six months or even a year if the M disc is miraculously uh, holding up as as we hope. Uh, so I'm going to take them in. I'll take some photographs to see if there's any... Um, because even the, even the first ones I did, the CDs, if I can go into the Google, uh, the photos I just took of them, which is the first batch. Yeah, these guys on the right are the first CDs. The first one's kind of okay, but for the second one, the paint's already... or the, the paint, the, the marker is already like completely faded. You can see in the second one, it's not readable. So for that reason, for this one, I wrote on the inset in a stronger marker, like an alcohol-based marker, and on the body was the dis disc-safe uh, water-based marker, just so that we don't have that problem again. Um, so then, so yeah, so this is just the plan for the experiment. So then I will do digital uh, examination, if you will. I'm gonna read them in DV Disaster, which should show up any bad sectors. And we'll count the bad sectors and see which ones did better. Um, and uh, that is basically it. So these are the test discs. Um, I burned six discs. All just have this Popeye movie on them. First ones are um, 
CDs and uh, this local brand called Silverline was really cheap, but actually, interestingly enough, it seems to be higher quality than the uh, than the Maxell stuff I bought from Amazon. But I said I'd try one of each, so th- those are discs one, two, three, and four. Uh, two of them are CDs, two of them are Blu-rays. Uh, CMC is the first one, and the other ones uh, show up. Sorry, the yeah, the Silverline, um, which is the cheap brand. Uh, the CD and DVD both show up as CMC and the Maxell both show up as uh, MID detected of Ritec. So we should get an interesting data point here of whether Ritec or CMC made media uh, manages better. Uh, let's just see what else I recorded. I just recorded like all the details I could get, like the ERRC data and also this disc category thing, which only showed up for the the CDs, as you can see. This one actually um, claims to be high beta and low beta. I'm not too sure uh, what these things are and whether there's any significance to them. So that's the first four. So these are the really important ones, are discs, t- test disc two and test disc six. Uh, the first one is a verbatim HTL inorganic Blu-ray with a 25 gig capacity. The second one is an M disc with the exact same capacity. And the MIDs did flag, was the M disc one flagged with uh, the one that some people think some people think if it's, it doesn't show this, it's not really an M disc. I, I don't really think that's true, but that's the opinion people have. So for this one, uh, it did actually detect as Millen MR1000, and the Blu ray detected as Verbate IME000. As I said, I used the same burn speed of 4x for both of those discs. And I think that's all about all there is to be said about it. So let me just show you guys some photos of the setup. So these, the, these are the initial conditions of the discs. Uh, I haven't, uh, I should have done this before the video. Let me just rotate them. So this is the silver line one, which is the kind of cheap CD. And as you can see, I wrote, I'm expecting this to fade in the elements. So on the inset, I used uh, a, a more robust permanent marker that hopefully will uh, will hold up, but it should be pretty easy to identify them visually. Uh, that is the CD. Uh, this is the uh, the DVD, all the Maxell stuff. So these are the verbatim discs that I'm using for the experiment. As you can see, these are the labeled verbatim Blu-rays. They 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 have a max write speed of 16x, 25 gigs, and that is disc uh, five. Uh, this is the same one, the verbatim, and this is the M disc. So it's the same thing. It's a verbatim labeled uh, product, but you can see the M disc logo here on the side. These ones only write at 4x, and they're also 25 gigs, and that is disc 26 in the labeling. This is just them side to side. The one on the left is the regular Blu ray from uh, verbatim that's inorganic. The one on the right is the M disc. As you can see, they are almost identical except for the different write speed and for the nice little M disc logo on the disc on the right. Uh, these are all the discs uh, that I ready to go. I might make this a thumbnail for this video. Um, just out of interest, because people are always like kind of reading things into the into the light or how the disc looks on the underside. So on the left here we have the M disc, if I, if I recall correctly, and on the right is the verbatim. So these are the ones that are that the big question is: is one better than the other? They do look different from the underside. They have a different uh, different tint. Uh, this is the method. This is what I'm using to like hold them in place. As I said, I bought these knitting knitting needles and uh, wooden clamp thingies uh, in a craft store and uh, that's how they're held together. Um, it looks very interesting. I guess some people, if you're really into optical, you want some kind of quirky garden art, you could do that. So this is it vertical. So it would actually be, have been fine vertical. Uh, I'm going to just kind of like alternate it and this is the discs again. Um, so this is where they are. So that was before I moved them outside. This is where they're outside. They're literally just wedged under a suitcase. Uh, that I have uh, sitting in the porch. And this is uh, the new experiment is on the left here. Uh, these are the discs and they're facing with the lab- label side out. So what I'm going to do is rotate this every few days so both the surfaces get um, get exposure to UV light. And I also put them here intentionally because um, the sun, this is like facing, let's see, this is facing north. So the sun should kind of come at them in the morning from the side. And uh, they should then kind of get some decent sun exposure in the afternoons. And because it's currently raining a lot of the time here, uh, they should get some good rain uh, as well. This is just a quick photo from above with the two discs, uh, two experiments side by side. And you can see all the clutter on my porch in the photo. So this is the setup. Uh, Today is day zero or day, what should it be? Day one uh, of the experiment. And uh, I will report back in two weeks or so to see 
how the discs are faring. Hope this uh, video was uh, interesting. If you have done your own experimentation, I've seen some blogs, then please let me know uh, what you did, what I could be doing differently, any suggestions for the methodology. And if you want to con continue receiving videos from me about optical media and all these other delightfully weird topics, then do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and until the next video.